Hi, I'm Marie Elizabeth Molly, and this is Relationship Alchemy. Today, we're going to be talking about relationships for visionaries. This is a topic that's near and dear to my heart because I serve a lot of people who are super fired up about what they're here to do in the world, and they want a deeply loving and connected relationship. And sometimes it seems like we can't have both at the same time. It can be hard. So I'm going to share uh, one of my favorite tips to have it be easier and function better today. So the first question you may have is, how do I have both? When I'm in my creative solitary space, it's a very, it is a solitary relationship. It's between you and your creator, your muse, whatever you call that, that aspect of yourself that gives you downloads. And being in a relationship is a, is a not solitary endeavor. You have your relationship with yourself, which is key and at the center of everything. But then you have this relating with another. And that's where things can get somehow tricky is in that shift between your relating with yourself and with your inspiration and taking action on those things. And then all of a sudden, okay, now I have to relate to somebody else. And it doesn't always transition easily. So today we're going to talk about transitions and why they matter and why they're core and central to having a great relationship either as a visionary or with a visionary, depending on which side of the relationship you are. <laughs> so first, speaking to both the visionary and the partners of visionaries, is for, to maintain a high level of creativity and inspiration in life. You have to have rest and you have to have love. Both are necessary for the creative person to allow themselves. And it can be hard because there might be a fear like, oh, God forbid, my muse speak to me when I'm off here distracted doing something else. And so then we don't ever fully unplug. And then that's a reason why we tend to burn out and we don't have as many good creative ideas as we had before. So some problems that get in the way of transitioning well are, number one, you may not know that you need to be more deliberate about your transitions. You may not even know that that's a thing. Number two, you may know that you need to transition but don't know how to do it effectively. And number three, you may know that you need to transition. You may know how to transition, and yet you don't do it. You don't prioritize it. You don't make time for that. And that's either because you just don't care or you just haven't reoriented your priorities in such a way that it happens. You haven't figured out how important it is. So in my first marriage, I didn't know. So here's the first problem. I didn't know that I needed more deliberate transitioning. Both of us were writers. We would work separately all day long and then come together. And I felt so weird because often I'd be kind of irritated by him. I would feel critical. And I thought something was wrong with me instead of recognizing, oh, I haven't transitioned effectively so that I can be out of the workspace and into luscious receivership, connection, love space. And I felt kind of guilty about that, right? And that got in the way. And I also judged him as needy. And we do that a lot, right? Where we judge the other person some way or another instead of taking responsibility for the thing that we're doing or not doing. And now my partner understands that I have a need to transition. This is something we've talked about. This is something we've noticed that when I don't transition well, it doesn't go as well for us. <laughs> and he needs transitions too sometimes, you know? So we're open about it. We speak about it. We say, hey, I'm not quite ready to see you yet. I'll be ready in about 10, 15, 20, whatever, 30, whatever's true. I'm gonna go take a bath. I'm gonna go take a walk. I'm gonna bury my head in a book, whatever it is. And then I'll see you when I'm ready. And so there's permission and space for each other in the relationship, which is key for both partners. Transitions create receptiveness 
and availability because you can have your body in the room with your loved ones and still not be there at all. It's not enough to have your body in a chair and nod and be looking at your partner and have your mind somewhere else. That's not okay. So the first piece to understand is that transitions matter. It behooves you for you to do them well, and, it, and it's good for the sake of your relationship. Each partner needs to be self-responsible around how they transition so that when they come together, it's smoother. Now, the first piece is what does a transition look like for you? And this is an iterative process. You may have to trial and error that a little bit to find what works best. Some examples are taking a bath, taking a walk, getting out in nature, sitting down with a book and a cup of tea, taking a nap, dancing to your favorite song, exercising, slinging some weights around, getting the the day out of your body, stretching. All of these are examples of transitions that get you out of the workspace and into your body and, and available. Listening to a guided meditation or a hypnosis recording could be another choice. Do the research, try different stuff and see what works best to have your energy feel open and ready to be around other people at the end of the day and be psyched about it. This transition gets to be fun. This is a key component. This is for your sake and the relationship's sake. And if it's feeling like a chore, whatever you've chosen, if it's like, oh God, I got to do this thing, that is not the transition for you. It needs to feel pleasurable. It needs to feel like something you want to do so that you do it. Then the next part is to really talk it through with your partner. Be deliberate about the transitions that each of you need. Be transparent. Hey, have you noticed this is a thing? Like, like get open and talking about how you can support each other in transitioning well to be together. So this is something you're responsible for yourself, as is your partner responsible for their transition, and you can support each other in it. It's, a, it's another spot where you can be accountable and supportive, both. Now, I want to say a quick note to the partners of visionaries here, because if you notice that your partner isn't transitioning effectively and is distracted or otherwise not present with you, invite them. Say, hey, I notice you're not fully here. Do you need to transition? What might feel good right now? Because this it doesn't. <laughs> You might say it more elegantly than that, but really that's the communication, right? I would love for your presence and attention right now, and I'm not feeling it. What needs to happen for you to be available? I'm here. Can't wait to be with you when you're ready. The more that can be spoken in an atmosphere of love and support instead of blame, the better the results are going to be. Keep that in mind. As the partner of a visionary, I want you to really get that you do not have to settle for dregs just because your partner's up to big things in the world and creating big stuff. You get to have their presence and love and attention. And it's on them to figure out how to make an effective transition so they can give that to you. And if they don't, then that's a different conversation. If you've brought it up and they're unwilling to do anything different and you still feel like you're living with dregs, then that's a different conversation. With yourself first, like why am I okay with this? Or am I okay with this? Is this enough for me? And then a conversation with them. It might be a kind of come to Jesus conversation like, hey, this needs to change. You need to get better at transitioning and being with the family. But don't start there. <laughs> it's 
start with the assumption that they want to do that. And then ask them to do it if they don't. So the more transitions you learn to navigate better, both partners, whether you're both visionaries, one's a visionary, one isn't, etc., the more everyone learns how to navigate their own transitions better, that's, again, you're, you're iterating, you're researching, you're seeing what works. Once you get this transition thing down and the communication around it clean and clear and helpful, the more love, focus, rest, creative space you get to have, both individually and together, so that you can be the visionary you were born to be with lots of love and support in your corner. This is what excites me about this topic, that by learning how to transition better and be present and be available and receptive to your partner, you actually get to have so much more creativity and space to bring your manifestation into the world. I'm Marie Elizabeth, your relationship alchemist. And I show people how to have more loving and connected relationships that reflect the truth of who they are and support their growth. And today we've been talking about relationships for visionaries, which is a particular kind of relationship. To get a sense, a really quick and dirty sense of what's working great and what needs your attention to improve in your relationship, I recommend that you take my Relationship Alchemy Assessment, which is located at relationshipalchemyassessment.com or relationshipalchemyquiz.com. You can get there from both URLs. So go ahead, take the assessment, takes about four or five minutes, and you'll get a really clear sense of like, this is great, worth celebrating, we're solid. Here's where we need to be putting our attention and improving. I suggest you and your partner Take the assessment, share your results with each other, spark a conversation about what, what you noticed, each of you as priorities and also what needs to be tended to and worked with. And you might work some of that into your transition time, or you might notice that after you give yourself transition time, some of those things clear up. So go ahead and take that transition, highly recommended. and. This has been Relationships for Visionaries. And remember, until next time, a great relationship starts with you. 